Fourier series of a square wave provides insight that goes beyond the evaluation of the integral expression for the Fourier series coefficients. So in this video, we're going to find the Fourier series coefficients for a square wave and then use those to interpret the square wave as a weighted sum of sinusoidal building blocks. So recall that we may write a signal in a Fourier series representation as x of t equal the sum k equals minus infinity to infinity a k e to the j 2 pi k f naught t, where f naught is the fundamental frequency of the signal, and that's the inverse of the fundamental period. The coefficients a k are obtained as 1 over t naught, the integral of an interval of length t naught x of t e to the minus j 2 pi k f naught t dt. So here I've sketched a square wave that takes on the value of 1 for times 0 to 1, and then it's 0 between 1 and 2. So this is a periodic signal. Its fundamental period is t naught equals 2, and therefore it has a fundamental frequency of 1 half. I can write one period of the signal x of t as being equal to 1 when t is between 0 and 1, and it's 0 for t between 1 and 2. We can use this expression to find the Fourier series coefficients. So we have 1 half out front, and then we'll only integrate from 0 to 1. We should integrate from 0 to 2, but the region from 1 to 2 is exactly 0. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 1 of 1 times e to the minus j pi kt. Here we've substituted f naught equals 1 half, and that cancels the 2 that's in front of the pi. So we're left with minus pi kt. When k is equal to 0, the exponent goes away, and we're just integrating 1 from 0 to 1, and so that becomes 1 half times t evaluated at 1 and 0. And then when k is not equal to 0, this takes the form of an integrand e to the a t, so the integral is 1 over a e to the a t. We've got the 1 half and then negative j pi k in the denominator times e to the negative j pi k t. So when k equals 0, we obtain 1 half. And when k is not equal to 0, we have 1 over negative j 2 pi k times e to the minus j pi k minus 1. Well, e to the minus j pi is simply minus 1, so this term, e to the minus j pi k, is minus 1 to the kth power. And therefore, when k is even, minus 1 to an even power is 1, and I'll have 1 minus 1, or 0. So a k is going to be 0 whenever k is even. When k is odd, this becomes minus 1, and so I have minus 2 for the term in parentheses, and that will cancel out the minus 2 in the denominator, and we end up with 1 over j pi k when k is an odd integer. If I write out some of the terms in the infinite Fourier series expansion for this square wave, I'm going to have x of t is a number of terms, and we'll start with k equals minus 3, negative 1 over 3j pi times e to the minus j 3 pi t minus 1 over j pi e to the minus j pi t. This is the k equals 1 term. And then k equals 0, we have 1 half. And for k equals 1, I have 1 over j pi e to the j pi t. For k equals 3, I have 1 over 3j pi e to the j 3 pi t. So the spectrum of x of t is given by these coefficients that are multiplying the complex sinusoids, and those coefficients are located at the frequencies corresponding to the complex sinusoids. At frequency 1 half hertz, my coefficient in front is 1 over j pi. The spectrum has a component at 1 half hertz, and the amplitude of that component is the complex number 1 over j pi. Similarly, I have a component at 3 halves hertz associated with this complex sinusoid, and the amplitude of that component is 1 over 3 j pi, and so on. So for a general signal x of t, the Fourier series has all the terms from minus infinity to infinity, a k e to the j 2 pi k f naught t, and these complex sinusoids have frequencies k f naught hertz, so at multiples of f naught in the spectrum, we're going to have a complex amplitude a k, and I've sketched that here. Now one very useful observation 
about the spectrum is that A0, which I've written out here, it's 1 over T0, and we'll pick our interval from 0 to T0, x of T, times e to the minus j 2 pi 0 f naught t. So this complex sinusoid goes to 1 in the integrand. And I see that a0 is the area under x of t from 0 to t naught divided by t naught. So a0 is the average value of the signal. And for the square wave that we were looking at initially, the average value is 1 half. Because half the time the square wave takes a value of 1, and the other half the time that particular square wave took a value of zero. Well here I've sketched another very similar square wave, except this one is one between minus a half and a half. The period is also two, so the fundamental frequency is one half. But in this case, if I'm going to evaluate the integral to find the Fourier series coefficients, I'm going to choose different limits. In particular, I want to integrate from, say, minus one to one, because then I only have one interval where the signal is non-zero. If I integrated from zero to two, then I'd have the interval from zero to one half, and then from three halves to two that I'd have to account for in the integration. So we'll pick the interval minus one to one, and in that interval, the only part that matters is between minus one half and one half, because we're zero elsewhere. So AK can be written as one half integral minus a half to a half, one times e to the minus jk pi t dt. Well, substituting k equals zero, we see that a zero becomes one half, and again, that's the average value of this particular signal. When k is not equal to zero, a k becomes one over negative j two pi k times e to the minus jk pi t evaluated at one half and minus a half. We can substitute these limits from the integral into this expression and group the 2j together with the e to the j terms. I'm doing that so that I obtain something that I can simplify using the Euler expansion for the sine function. And I see that this becomes equal to sine of k pi over 2 divided by pi k. Now the sine of any integer multiple of pi is exactly zero. So if k is even, then a k is going to be exactly zero. Another fact that we observe is that since the sign in the numerator is an odd function of k, that is, if I change k to minus k, the sine function changes the sign. Similarly, in the denominator, if I change k to minus k, I change the sign here, so these two sign changes cancel out, and we see that a k is an even function of k. That is, a k equals a sub minus k. Making use of this even symmetry, I can group the terms in the sum from minus infinity to infinity. We'll group the terms for positive values of k and the terms for negative values of k, since they have the same Fourier series coefficients. So I'll pull out the one half, that's the term for k equals zero, and we'll only worry about the terms that are odd because the Fourier series coefficients are zero when k is even. And then I have this coefficient, which applies to both the positive indices for k and the negative indices. So we can pull these two together, and this looks like a cosine if I divide by two. So this term in parentheses is 2 cosine of k pi t. Now using the fact that sine of k pi over 2 is plus or minus 1 when k is odd, I can now rewrite my expression for x of t as shown in this bottom line. It's going to be 1 half plus when k equals 1, I have 2 over 1 times pi, then when k is equal to 3, I have negative 2 over 3 pi times cosine 3 pi t. Then when k is equal to 5, I have 2 over 5 pi times cosine 5 pi t, and so on. The sine of each term alternates, and the coefficients go down like 1 over n. So let's look at how these individual terms in the Fourier series expansion represent the signal. So in black, I've drawn the square wave that takes a value of 1 between minus a half and a half, and then it's 0 from minus 1 to minus a half, and it's 0 from 1 half to 1. 
So the first term, the line in blue, represents the constant 1 half, and that's the average value of the square wave. Now then we're going to add to that 2 over pi cosine pi t. And when I add that to 1 half, I get this waveform that's shown in the middle panel. You can see that this cosine term is starting to give some shape to our approximation. Now we'll then add the next term, which is negative 2 over 3 pi cosine 3 pi t. So notice that the frequency is three times the frequency that we had with the first term we added in. When I add this term, I get a closer approximation to the square wave. We'll take what we had at the bottom here and we'll add the next term, which was 2 over 5 pi times cosine 5 pi t, and it further smooths out some of the bumps and increases the steepness of the transition near 0.5. Then if I add in negative 2 over 7 pi cosine 7 pi t, we get an even better approximation. And each term that we add in gives us a closer and closer approximation to the square wave. Just continuing this process, when we add in the term for k equals 25, which is going to be 2 over 25 pi cosine 25 pi t, you can see that we are getting closer and closer to a square wave. There are these ripples near the boundary, but we get a better and better approximation to the square wave as we add more terms. So in general, for an arbitrary signal, we have the Fourier series representation that x of t is a sum k equals minus infinity to infinity of lowercase a sub k e to the j 2 pi k f naught t. This is the exponential form of the Fourier series, and we have previously written this as a sum of cosines as well. In that case, we can pull out a0, the average value, plus the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of uppercase ak cosine 2 pi k f naught t plus phi k. And in these expressions, we are describing the signal x of t using sinusoidal building blocks. In the exponential Fourier series, we're using complex sinusoids as the building blocks. And in the cosine form of the Fourier series, we're using a real value sinusoid as the building blocks. And you can see from this square wave example how these blocks add up to construct the signal that we're interested in. And in general, for an arbitrary signal, we're going to have different weights and phase shifts or different complex amplitudes. But the principle nonetheless applies that we are describing an arbitrary signal as a weighted sum of these basic building blocks that are given by sinusoids whose frequencies are integer multiples of the fundamental frequency of the signal.